life and the strange things I've seen. But before I do, I want you to understand that my actions in the end had reasons. Okay. I was born to a single mother. She was only around 15 the time I was born. And she wasn't exactly ready to be a mother. Apparently, my dad was even less ready because his parents ended up sending him to boarding school so he wouldn't have to be responsible for me and my mother. We were mostly supported by her parents, but otherwise we were completely alone. I started discovering my gift when I was about five years old. My great-grandmother had passed away. I felt really confused when I walked into the viewing room on the funeral parlor and saw my grand sitting in the chair next to her own casket. At that point, I had already grasped that death meant you were gone forever. And yet, there she was. My confusion was overpowered with relief approaching her. She seemed different there, but not quite the same. Like when you're picturing something in your head, your eyes are open and you're clearly seeing what's in the room, but something entirely different at the same time. She whispered in my ear and kissed my forehead and disappeared. I walked up to my mom and asked her about roses in Italy as Gran had instructed. To this day, I still don't know what that meant, but it was something important enough to make my mother fall to her knees. She held me and it was the only time that I remember feeling like she truly loved me. As I grew, my gift became a little more apparent. I'd see people I wasn't supposed to see in everyday situations. A few would even notice me and follow me home. I didn't mind, and none of them ever imposed or tried to harm me. They just wanted company until they figured out how to move on, or they found someone that was more interesting to follow around. I'd talk about it as if it was normal. My mother put forth no effort to stop me, but still acted embarrassed when I did it around other people. No one took it seriously, though. Not like Mom did. Honestly, I think she feared me for a while. When I was eight, things changed, and it was all due to my mom meeting a man named Mike. <laughs> Mike was lanky, he smelled bad, talked a little too loud. Still, he had a more stable job than mom did, so she fell right into his lap. <laughs> he wasn't a horrible guy at first, just kind of greedy. My mom told him about my gift and came up with them. And he came up with the master plan to use me as a pay pig. Post my name up in the books as world's youngest psychic. I didn't know if he believed the gift was real at first, but he learned otherwise eventually. That's why I started talking to dead people and oh, living when I was just beginning to learn multiplication. It was fun at first when I wasn't using the same old tell my mom I love <laughs> when it wasn't using the same old tell my mom I love her bullcrap there was a case when I was 13 where I was seeing a family who believed that the spirit of a four year old girl was haunting their house they claimed they didn't intend to make the girl leave they just wanted to learn more about her so they could make her more comfortable in their home when I walked into the house, there was definitely no little girl. There was, a, there was however, a gray, non-human entity crouched on their 17-year-old back son. Son's back, I mean. Sorry, it's just kind of hard to look back on these things. Its skin looked more like paper, and its eyes were fully blood red. It came in a human-like shape, but it was far, far from human. These non-human things are called sixes. Sixes are souls that never were human. They were created out of pure sorrow and hatred. Their negative emotion embodied into evil spiritual being. It can project the actions of human spirits to confuse their hosts. 
make them think they're just victims of a normal haunting. Human souls cannot hurt you unless they're extremely sinister. Like Bundy Sinister. Sixes, however, can, along with several other non-human entities. They suck every emotion out of you and radiate so much of their own sorrow and hatred you either kill yourself or commit a crime so horrible that you'll likely get the death penalty. They usually go after evil, corrupt, or just plain miserable people. They were called sixes because they'd usually only last about six months before you lost it. I think I started resenting my mother when I was 16. I had gotten tired of the, the job. Everyone in town knew me. All the kids at school called me a freak. By this point, Mike had just started to drink away all the money that people had paid me to tell them that their grandmother loved them or their dead child was in a better place. And he became violent. Angry. He hit my mother, and she took it for a while. Then she started to blame me. If you never would have started to talk to fucking Casper, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. Completely ignoring the fact that he was her boyfriend, not mine. Not long after that, he stopped hitting her and then started hitting me. And then she did too. Only months later did I start seeing sixes roaming around whenever my parents were near. I watched them... I watched this without a word, still allowing them to escort me to jobs. First, the sixes would stay far away. I'd see them out the window, across the street. They creeped closer as time went on, very slowly. My curiosity heavily outweighed my fear. I had only ever seen them on people's backs. I became a bit more startled when they started, when they stood at our windows. And they never, they knew I could see them, but they disregarded me. I said, Nothing to my mother the day I watched one crawl under her back and latch its gaping teeth and, and onto her shoulder. I wasn't surprised the day I saw another one on Mike's back. I thought about telling Mike and my mother, calling up a specialist to get rid of the sixes that had only just begun to drain the sad excuse for a family. Then I thought about finally being alone, never having to do jobs that they told me to do, never being subjected to a drunken lecture about my responsibility to support my family, never explaining my bruises to my teachers. So I didn't tell them. I just sat back and enjoyed the show. Well, I'm back. I wasn't really going to come back here and write again, but so many of you wanted to hear more, more about my parents' ultimate end, or about the different kinds of non-human entities. I guess a part of me was afraid that I was going to get into trouble. Still, here I am again. I guess I'm here to tell you exactly what I observed between the points that Sixes latched on my mother and Mike. First, I want to clear a few things up that popped up in the comments. No, I'm not Six. That doesn't make any sense because being human is one of the things that Sixes crave, but can't really have. They can't communicate, use computers, Pretty much do anything basic, do any basic human thing. I don't think they have the capacity to consider communication. I also have been a victim of a six. To be honest, I think I also haven't been a victim of a six. To be honest, I think it freaks them out that I can see them, so they've stayed away from me. And lastly, I didn't mean to sound so apathetic in my original ent entry. To be quite honest, I was horrified, but my internal defenses told me that it was the only way that I had a chance to get away from the beatings. Curiosity in me wanted to document what I was seeing. This won't be much like my previous entry. It will be less personal and a lot more documentary style. I guess you could say I won't be going much into the faux hauntings part of what the sixes create, because it's mostly uninteresting. I want you to know how sixes affect human beings, not their surroundings. The first month was mostly normal. Other than the fact that my parents became tired and very reclusive, the beating slowed down a lot. She got to the point where it was only around the time where I would get too close or talk too much, which would annoy them both. 
There were times when they would both wake up screaming and consistently make comments on feeling like they were being watched. I reassured them, though gritted my teeth, that they weren't being watched, and as I stared into the eyes of the being that only wanted to feed on them. Month two, my parents began sleeping unreasonably long, like 17 hours at a time. Sometimes they'd even wet the bed, I had to clean it, absolutely inhuman, but usually normal for subjects of sixes. Attempting to wake them would be incredibly dangerous, but then again it was kind of like that before, only now it was amplified. At one point I woke my mother up to ask if I could borrow some bus fare to pay my way to a meeting with a family that was dealing with a supposed demonic haunting. Which was actually just a poltergeist activity caused by a 17-year-old boy with acne problems. She shot up, turned her head slowly, and began screaming the most deafening, inhumane scream imaginable. After that, she launched herself at me. Thankfully, at this stage, they are mostly drained of energy. She slapped me a few times before crawling back into bed, falling asleep as soon as she hit the pillow. Month three. Oh, month three. Oh, the depressive stage, which is mostly, which is usually when we're commonly called in to treat a case if we're not already called in by the first month. My parents had to cut back on sleeping a few hours and just began sobbing about the most absolute worst things almost all the time. They both began to self-harm as well, right in front of me. <laughs> well, this was at least, well, this was the least harmful month for me. It was worse to watch. There were several points where I wanted to tell them, but I knew they would but I knew they would be angry. Additionally, they both claimed to see red eyes behind their shoulders once again. I reassured them I saw nothing. I felt bad. Month four, this is when things started to turn. They stopped sleeping almost entirely and talked about and talked almost constantly. I had never seen this phase personally, so I had no idea what to expect. I was sitting on the couch and when my mother sat down next to me and looked me in the eyes for the first time since I was little. But there wasn't love in her eyes, like there had been at one point. I couldn't quite pin my finger on it. What it was, before she started to speak, she spoke so fast it took me a minute to make out what she said. I never wanted you, never once in my life. I never wanted you when you were a baby. I thought about smothering you with a pillow and claiming SIDs and claiming SIDs. The only thing you've ever been good for had was being a freak. This broke off into a month of hell. One that I'll do my best to forget after this. My parents lost their filter entirely. They couldn't they could have been making things up to be intentionally hurtful, but it didn't seem like it. <laughs> month five. I had been absent for a lot of this. They were both extremely violent to the point where I was almost killed. I had been brushing my teeth when Mike burst into the bathroom. By this point, both of them were completely spastic almost all of the time. He grabbed me by the back of the hair, kicked me in the back of the legs until I was onto the floor. He dragged me by my hair over to the toilet where he attempted to drown me. I don't know what caused him to stop. But he got distracted before he could finish the job. That's around the time I decided I couldn't safely stick around. I couch surfed a few days until a friend with one of the gifts, M Milena, let me stay with her indefinitely. I told her what was going on. She agreed that we would wait it out and keep an ear out. Milena can see what I see, but... She can also read people's mood, moods in basically the aura of a place. We talked about how to handle the end of it all. She was completely against going around during the final day. But I just had to see what happened to Sixes after they finished the job. Month 6. We showed up at the apartment complex around 6 a.m. There were other inhuman entities outside the building. They were called Watchers. Watchers are pretty much explained by their name. They're people who, watch, who like to watch people do bad things, not just murder or suicide. 
molestation, abuse, sexual assault, etc. They feed off that until the deed is over. They look almost like normal people, but they're yellowed like an old photo. And they have these awful grins on their faces. The only parts of them that move are the are their eyes. I've never seen them on a job, but I've seen them in public in various places, which worried me to the point where I had to go home. I can help with dead people. I can even do a little about inhumane entities, but I can't make humans not do fucked up shit. It was around 9 a.m. that Melina became became too overwhelmed by the awful feelings she was getting. So I told her that it was all right to go park down the block while I went inside to check on them. She protested, but only for a second. I think she knew how important it was for me, for me. The watcher's eyes followed me from the car into the building as I exited the stairway into the hallway of the floor, plant, floor my parents lived on. I heard an absolutely horrifying shriek, and I knew it was happening. I bolted, fumbled to get my keys out of the bag. I undid the lock and swung the door open as fast as I could. The sixes were no longer on my parents' back. I think that was the first thing I noticed. They were crawling around them in circles. Mike was in the was on top of my mother, pinning both of her arms down with his knees. God, it was such a bloody scene. I had seen some horrible things, but this kind of brutality was an entirely different chapter for me. I could tell that she was already gone. Man, the six that had been using her was only absorbing what was left inside. Mike turned to look at me, a horrible grin on his face, not unlike the ones I had seen surrounding me outside. With the knife he had just used to kill my mother, he slit his own throat. I stood there frozen, not sure what to do. I had imagined what it was, what this day was going to be like, but I never thought it would be so brutal. I, I never thought it would be that I guess a part of me assumed that they'd just hang themselves, but that would be the least violent and not in their natures. The sixes circled around their body a few moments more before I caught their eyes. They both became startled, quickly crawled up the wall past me and out the door. I dropped to my knees and sat for what felt like an eternity before a police officer dragged me away. One of the neighbors I called the cops, I guess. I was brought down to the station, but all I could tell them was that my parents had been acting strangely for months. I was cleared to leave, and Elena took me back to her house, where I broke down and cried in front of a human being for the first time in what felt like years. <laughs> I haven't worked a six job since then. I got emancipated on my 17th birthday, dropped out of high school, and moved into a small apartment across town quit doing jobs, but only for a short while. I needed the money, and nobody was going to hire me for normal work, not with my reputation. People in the gifted community knew that I knew that I allowed it to happen. A few people that were close enough to know my parents were tyrants, were understanding, and even somewhat grateful. I was walking documentation of how it all happened. Everyone else was afraid of me. I guess I've grown from the situation. We now know a lot more about sixes and how to stop them before it's too late. There are a lot less cases now that escalated fully. Still, I have a lot, I have this awful fear in the back of my mind that watching my parents die will break will break my spirit and eventually put a six on my back one day. I'm even more afraid of being condemned for to hell for what I did where I know my parents are just waiting for me. <laughs>